is the giving spirit. It's woven into West Liberty's history and traditions. News Center 7's Molly Cohen takes us to the village for our Seven Seas Your Town. In West Liberty. One thing is certain. And I'm glad to see you because you've all been really, really good. You know that? Everyone yeah, is on the nice list. You want to know what I mean? Will that be okay? We were there as Santa himself was showing his generosity, giving out candy to boys and girls in front of Town Hall. Merry Christmas to you too. You guys have a fun walk, okay? For this stop on our tour of the Miami Valley, we didn't just take a trip to West Liberty, we took a trip back in time. When I first got on council in 2008, the upstairs was in horrible shape. So, Mayor Joe McKelvey said the community raised more than $600,000 in donations to restore the building. And it's amazing because they have raised money from all over the country, from people who had once lived in West Liberty. And now they can sit in the same chairs people used more than 150 years ago. And we preserve six of them. They're downstairs, but they used to be upstairs here in the Opera House. The thing we're most excited about is how the paint turned out. Andrew Blount is the West Liberty Historical Society treasurer. We're just coming up here to the spot where the painters revealed this design to us. The original design from 1869, hidden under layers of paint for decades. Painters recreated the print from the floor to the ceiling. Nobody would ever do anything like this today, which is why it's neat that we did it. This will look different than any other public space in the area. We were able to keep these. And on display downstairs, the invitation from the building's dedication hop. In the same hallway, the Yoder family is still a large part of our community, the King family. The village managed to save the names of all West Liberty residents who served during World War II, men who gave their time to the service of our country, and some who gave their lives. I'm very proud. I mean, this, this speaks to West Liberty's commitment to, you know, to the United States, to the village, to the state. I mean, this is who we are. And recognition for the village's veterans doesn't stop here. A new Purple Heart Memorial shines for all to see. It is lit up with purple LED lights, and it is so beautiful. You can see it from one end of town to the other. As the memorial preserves history, Mitch Lingrel is selling it. Look at this. Instant ancestors. Instant ancestors are a big thing in this business. LT's Uniquities carries vintage decor and furniture dating back as far as the 1700s. It's not about purchasing stuff. Walk through time. Something may strike you, something may not. And this time of year? Vintage Christmas is huge. These are probably the hottest thing is ceramic trees. Passing holiday traditions through generations. Much like the folks at Marie's Candies. Oh, I'm about to get a spoon and just like that, oh, yeah. But the employees here do get to eat as much as they want while they work. And as they do, they're enjoying original recipes co-owner Rebecca Craig's grandparents, Marie and Winfred King, created. Winfred was a farmer and got polio and could no longer farm. That was in 1941, and in true West Liberty spirit, their neighbors stepped in to help. And they were making candy and cakes and things to give as thank you gifts for all the help. And then it just became a way of living for them. Marie's Candies opened in 1956. Now it has 30 employees and more than 100 different kinds of chocolates. I'm grateful to be in West Liberty just because I'm continuing the legacy that my grandparents started here and being able to give back to the community that really was helpful to them. And because we hadn't had quite enough sweets for the day, we decided to head over to Liberty Gathering Place. That's my favorite thing to do. I love to do the pies. And Liberty Gathering Place owner Cindy Olker makes everything from scratch. Butterscotch is always Friday, coconut's always Thursday, peanut butter's always Wednesday. Although, we have been doing peanut butter just about every day of the week, just because. Olker's peanut butter pie has won grand champion several times at the Champaign County Fair. That's good. That's excellent. And I can see why. How many pies did you say you make a year? A year. Wow. I don't know, maybe I don't want to know that. It makes me tired. <laughs> Because in addition to the pies customers enjoy in the restaurant, she also sells them for people to take home. Even though maybe you're not going to have homemade, it's a piece of homemade that's coming in. Homemade from her hometown of West Liberty. 
got a thousand plus people in this community. Why is there so much going on? People love this community and are willing to give their time and making it a better place to live. The folks of West Liberty certainly made me feel welcome, and I know they'll do the same for you when you come by for a visit. In the village of West Liberty, Molly Cohen, Community Center 7. And now, your Storm Center 7 forecast. That's weather coverage you can count on. So it's been a pretty atypical weather day, not only for all the folks out to our west and northwest dealing with that severe weather threat here in the month of December, but also here at home as well. We tied a record high temperature today in the Dayton area of 63 degrees. That record goes all the way back to 1948. It's still pretty warm out there this evening. So even though we're not dealing with the severe weather threat tonight, we're still feeling the winds in advance of that cold front that's going to move through tomorrow. And we're pretty gusty up there right now, anywhere from the 25 to 30 mile per hour range, even a little bit stronger up there in Salina, gusting to 36 miles per hour. We just picked up a gust to 32 miles per hour there in Urbana. And those winds out of the south continue to usher in that unseasonably warm air. Our average high temperature for the day this time of year is 42 degrees. We're 59 degrees right now in Dayton. So if you're a fan of the uh, warmer weather and not having to pay as much on your heating bill right now, I know you're not minding those numbers, but still not something that we're used to this time of year. Things were dry, a lot of seven satellite radar, not finding anything right now, but that's going to change tomorrow. So as this cold front gets here, we'll see the winds pick up overnight into tomorrow. Then we'll see our rain chances increasing during the day tomorrow behind Behind all of this, though, we do go cooler by the weekend, back to some more seasonal numbers. All right, so let's dive in. It's a nice night out there in Troy right now. Again, very spring-like or early fall-like. So if you need to go for a walk with the dog late this evening, you may see some stronger wind gusts out there across the northern Miami Valley, but really not much to complain about, especially with those numbers we just saw. And, of course, local radar is dry. Different story, though, back out to the west. We've been tracking this potent storm system all day long today, and there's still tornado watches through parts of Wisconsin and Illinois. Illinois right now, then those little yellow boxes indicate those severe thunderstorm watches. So, still strong out there. Now, this front is going to make it to the Miami Valley, but by the time it gets here tomorrow, it's a much weaker version of itself. So, let's track your rain chances. Again, rest of tonight, we're looking for dry weather. It'll be pretty quiet out there. We could see a sprinkle in spots, but that's about it. Your Thursday morning starts off, we'll call it mainly dry, but you may run into a stray shower on your morning commute. But by far, the better chance for rain tomorrow holds off until after 9 or 10 in the morning. Then you see just gradually the swath of rain starts to come through here. So middle of the day, lunchtime is looking pretty soggy tomorrow, and then your ride home could also be... Uh, soggy at times, so pack your patience as you leave the office tomorrow, but uh, bottom line, just kind of a rainy day. Windy as well. We'll see those gusts increasing tonight and then staying with us through a good portion of the day tomorrow. So uh, by tomorrow morning, waking up to wind gusts, uh, probably stronger than what this is showing, more so like 30 to 40 miles per hour and then peaking uh, close to 40 miles per hour during the day tomorrow. So um, it, it is going to be breezy. If you're driving a high-profile vehicle tomorrow, especially early in the day, definitely be careful with that. Driving conditions will go downhill through about midday, improving later in the day as the rain starts to get on out of here. Sunday forecast shows that it's going to stay unsettled also for Friday and Saturday. It will be dry for the first part of the day on Friday, but rain returns late Friday, persisting through at least the first half of the day on Saturday. So we need to get through that. After that, it's smooth sailing Sunday through Wednesday, but back to the cold stuff. 37 degrees, my forecast high for Sunday afternoon. Thank you, Austin. From uh, Springfield Wildcat to uh, Harvard Crimson. During today's big announcement, how this young man hopes his next move inspires other student-athletes from right here in Oregon. 